I remember the day it all began with a clarity that still haunts me, a day like any other in the sun-soaked skies of California. My name is Kiara, and until the events I'm about to recount, my life was remarkably, uh, raunchy. I was an OnlyFans model, a career choice that drew as much criticism as it did adoration, but it allowed me to express myself and connect with people in ways I never thought possible and find new adventures from the comfort of my bedroom. That was until I received a request from an anonymous subscriber that would unravel the very fabric of my reality. The request was peculiar, yet intriguing to mimic poses from ancient paintings while wearing a revealing outfit. The subscriber, who went by the moniker The Painter, offered a substantial sum for my compliance. I was used to handling weirder requests, so I didn't think much about it. The first pose was from a painting I recognized immediately, Botticelli's The Birth of Venus. I had taken an art course in college. It felt strange positioning my body to mirror the goddess of love, The requests grew stranger, each painting older and more obscure than the last, and with each new request, the sum which I was being paid jumped as well, first by a few hundred dollars, and then by a few thousand. But I noticed that with every pose I recreated, an inexplicable chill crept into my apartment. When I posed about a woman with a flower vase behind her, a vase of flowers I had kept behind me suddenly flew off and smashed on the wall. Then came the whispers, soft at first, like the rustling leaves. They grew in intensity each night, speaking in a strange language I couldn't understand, but felt it in my bones. My sleep also became fitful. I would suddenly wake up in the middle of the night, plagued by the dreams of a dark-skinned woman whose body is twisted in an unnatural form, curled from the waist and hands thrown around with dislocated shoulders. She would hum a wail, a wail that resembled the moans of a dying whale, and then she would suddenly start weeping blood from her dark eyes, after which I would wake up, panting and covered in sweat. The realization hit me one evening as I set up for another photo. The paintings, the poses, there seemed to be a connection between them. Each one seemed like a piece of a larger, more sinister puzzle. In my naivety, I had probably stepped into something darker. But every time a doubt would linger in my mind, I would suddenly be offered a few thousand extra dollars. The painter, it seemed, could read my mind just by seeing the expression on my face. He had me, and he definitely didn't want to let me go. Desperate for answers, I scoured the internet for information about the painter. My search led me to a decades-old legend about a reclusive artist who, shunned by the world for his unsettling, dark, and gory works, finally sought immortality through his paintings. He was rumored to have made a pact with dark forces before suddenly vanishing, offering his soul in exchange for the power to trap the essence of life itself on canvas. The realization chilled me to my core. I was not just mimicking poses. I was completing rituals that summoned these spirits into my home. The final request arrived on a night when the air in my apartment hung heavy, charged with anticipation. I was getting paid $100,000 for it, the kind of money no one in my family had ever seen before. The painter asked for a recreation of a painting I could not find in any records, a portrait of a woman whose eyes seemed to weep blood, her form twisted in an agony of either ecstasy or torment. It was impossible to tell which. As I prepared to mimic the pose, a dread unlike any other filled me. The whispers crescendoed into a cacophony. The shadows in my apartment expanded into forms that were almost human. I realized then that I was not alone, and never had been since the first photo I uploaded. The horror of my situation was complete, but it was the truth behind the painter that would unravel the last threads of my sanity. The truth was as cold and unforgiving as the shadows that now danced freely in my once peaceful apartment. He said that as an artist, he got so consumed by his craft that he crossed into the realm of the occult, seeking to capture not just the image of his subjects, but their very souls. 
His name was lost to time, but his legacy would live on. As I stood in my living room, the air thick with the presence of the unseen, I had a feeling that the final pose was not just another ritual. It was the culmination of them all, the key to unlocking whatever darkness the painter had contracted. But the hundred thousand dollars were on my mind. The things I could buy, finally gift a car to my father. With trembling hands, I set my camera to capture the pose, my heart heavy with the knowledge that I was about to complete a cycle that began long before I was born. I struck the pose, mirroring the twisted agony of the woman in the painting, and at that moment, the apartment seemed to sigh, a sound so full of sorrow and relief that it was almost human. The camera clicked, and the shadow surged forward, enveloping me in darkness. I braced myself for the end, for the cold embrace of whatever lay beyond. But the end did not come. Instead, the shadows receded, and the whispers faded, leaving behind a silence so profound it rang in my ears. I was alone, truly alone, for the first time since the painter had entered my life. I rushed to my computer, but the painter was gone disappeared while I received the message of a transfer of $100,000. In the days that followed, my life returned to a semblance of normality, but the peace, as I always knew in my heart, was going to be short-lived. The twist in my tale, the truth that haunts me to this very day, came unexpectedly. A week later, there was a knock at my door. I opened it to find no one there, just a small box at my foot. I took it to the kitchen counter and opened it carefully to find a note which said thank you. But what accompanied it was an image, an image that shook me to my bones. It was my final picture, as I posed in a twisted form in a revealing outfit to mimic the last painting which I had received. But right behind me was a naked, dark-skinned woman with eyes that wept blood, her form twisted, not in agony, but in relief. It was a portrait of me, but I never realized that this spirit, this soul behind me, finally escaped into the real world. I am Kiara, a model from California who once sought connection through the digital world, only to find herself entwined in a centuries-old narrative of art, obsession, and the quest for freedom. My apartment is quiet now, the shadows nothing more than the absence of light, but sometimes... When the sun sets and the world quiets, I can hear the faint echo of a brush against canvas or slight breaths on my neck. New York City's skyline was a dazzling array of lights and dreams, a perfect backdrop for my life's latest chapter. I, Elena, had transformed from a struggling contemporary artist into a successful OnlyFans model who knew that the more clothes I'd drop, the more dollars I'd make. My high-rise apartment with its floor-to-ceiling windows offered views that seemed surreal. Skyscrapers touching the skies, the hustle of the streets below, a stark contrast to the small, dimly-lit shared flat I used to call home. The luxurious brands that now filled my closet, the exclusive parties I was invited to, and the sleek black car that awaited me downstairs. Struggling artists have done worse. But then I came across Adrian, and it changed everything. He was different than my other patrons. He never forced me to do questionable things. In fact, he liked me covered up. He said that he just wanted my company. It felt as if he saw through my facade. Within a week, he slid into my DMs, offering to sponsor my content exclusively for his eyes. It was accompanied by a transfer that dwarfed any income I had seen in months. The gesture was grand, yet it was his words that captivated me. A promise of no strings attached, an allure of something more profound than mere transactional support. Adrian was an enigma, wrapped in the mystery of his digital persona. What drew me to him was not just the financial freedom he offered, but the way he spoke, with a depth and understanding that seemed beyond the superficial interactions I was accustomed to. His messages were filled with references to art, literature, and a life that seemed both lavish and introspective. 
There was a vulnerability in his words, a reflection of my own insecurities and aspirations that made me feel seen, understood, and inexplicably connected to him. Our first meeting was set against the backdrop of an art gallery opening, a world I was familiar with yet had felt alienated from it in my recent life. My heart raced as I dressed for the occasion, slipping into a dress that felt like a piece of art itself, my reflection in the mirror a stark reminder of the dual life I'd led. But when I got there, I was scared to find no one. And just when alarms started going off in my head as I heard a sound of glass shattering, in walked Adrian. Handsome, suave, kind eyes. He said that he wanted to surprise me, so he arranged a private tour a day before the opening. Oh God, who was this guy? As we walked through the gallery, Adrian shared stories behind each piece, his passion for art evident in his every word. We talked about the struggles of artists, the beauty of creation, and the masks people wear to shield their true selves. It was a conversation that flowed effortlessly, and then we came across an ornate mirror, an art installation titled Inwards. As we saw our reflections and spoke further, I felt a connection that was both exciting and dangerously intimate. That is where he grabbed me by my waist and kissed me passionately. I couldn't get him out of my mind that night as he dropped me home and left, and the next morning I woke up to the delivery of the same mirror, a gift worth $80,000. However, it soon gave way to unsettling occurrences. My reflection in the gifted mirror began to move independently, a chilling echo of my actions, yet distinctively separate. And then messages I didn't remember sending appeared in my OnlyFans inbox, their content eerily personal and revealing. These occurrences, increasingly bizarre and frightening, seemed to coincide with the deepening of my relationship with Adrian. He, with his enigmatic aura and profound understanding of my psyche, appeared to be the only one who could offer explanations. Yet his responses were cryptic, deepening the mystery that surrounded him. Adrian, the man who had entered my life with promises of support and understanding, now stood at the center of a whirlwind of doubt and fear, his true intentions as elusive as the shifting reflections in the ornate mirror he had gifted me. It was a walking red flag, yet there was something off about him which I couldn't put my finger on. As my relationship with Adrian evolved, so did the nature of his involvement in my life. He would come over to my apartment and watch me fall asleep. He began to dictate the content I posted, subtly at first, then with increasing assertiveness. He suggested changes in my appearance, asked for pictures and specific poses, and I never realized how he had slowly isolated me from the community I had built. Each suggestion was wrapped in the guise of caring, but the undercurrent of control was unmistakable. Soon, I was so much dependent on him that it hit me one day that I had destroyed my flourishing OnlyFans career. If Adrian screwed me, I would be back to my struggling days in no time. One day, when I suddenly woke up to find him in my room, staring at my reflection in the mirror that he had gifted, I lost it and confronted him. I expected anger, denial, perhaps even an apology, but his reaction was none of these. Instead, he challenged me to look inwards for answers, and that is when I realized that he wasn't actually in my room, yet I could see his reflection in the mirror getting up and approaching me. I panicked, but then in a moment that defied reality, his reflection touched the mirror and it gave away. The mirror, symbolic of the barrier between our world, shattered, its fragments reflecting the breakdown of the illusion Adrian had created. In the silence that followed, sanity hit me, and the truth revealed itself with a crushing clarity. Adrian had never existed outside my own psyche. He was a manifestation of my deepest desires, insecurities, and fears, a mirror image of my own soul. He was a persona my mind created in the bid to stop me from losing myself to the thing I was doing. I created his account, 
I sent myself messages from him. I asked myself to cover up and become exclusive so that I stop engaging with the hundred creeps I met on the internet every day. The glass shattering was me breaking into the gallery that night, and the mirror... I had used every bit of money that I earned from OnlyFans to buy it, only to break it and find my true self. The realization was as liberating as it was devastating, but I found my identity again. Now, as I sit in my therapist's office recording these events as an exercise to come to terms that I am in the early stages of schizophrenia, I feel content. Yet, as I open my eyes... I can see Adrian, my mysterious, gorgeous therapist, going through my private pictures that I pretend to accidentally share to him. Yes, I could see the ring on his finger, but I also see him fidgeting his legs and beads of sweat dripping down his forehead. I see the way he stares at my body, and truth be told, I like it. These are, uh, these are great clicks. Thank you. My ex took them. Too bad I don't have anyone to take my pictures in lingerie again. Uh, oh, uh, well, I was somewhat of a photographer in college. Aw, Adrian, I don't want to bother you. You couldn't, even if you try. And just like that, I invited him for a glass of wine, which he agreed to, without much thinking. 